All right, there it is. Sounds good. Welcome to Partners in Pastries with the United Way of Olmstead County. We're really grateful for the opportunity once a quarter to highlight our funded program partners. Today on this snowy January day, we're very grateful to spend some time with Hawthorne Education Center. Um, so we're really excited to welcome Nadine, Karen, and Maggie to share about the programs that they serve and the people that make our community so vibrant. So my first question for you today is if you could please tell us about Hawthorne Education Center and your mission. So Hawthorne Education Center is Rochester's adult literacy program. Um, the adult literacy program um, serves approximately about 1,200 adult students a year. Um, we have about 50 different languages that are represented in that population. Um, our mission really is to help uh, adults improve their skills, uh, academic skills, so that they can either transition to college or better employment. Um, we want our uh, students to be you know, successful so that they can um, get good paying jobs, so that they can take care of themselves and their families. Well, it's a lot to cover in you know, one center and just one organization. You guys do a lot of wonderful things. Um, so I guess I can add on to that. I, I can elaborate a little bit. So our programming, um, we do um, adult English as a second language. Uh, we also do um, high school completion for students who do not have the opportunity to complete high school or dropped out. Um, and then we also do refresher courses in reading, writing, math um, to help students uh, be better prepared for when they transition to college or if they need those skills to get a job um, promotion opportunity. A wonderful okay. mission to help grow our workforce here in Olmsted County, especially as Rochester grows. We need more of a workforce, so it's a fabulous mission and doing incredible work with the adults in our community. Um, United Way proudly supports the Literacy and Life Skills for English Language Learners program. Could you tell us more about what that specific program does? Yeah, um, so that grant is through um, independent living. So our English language learners have a room to grow with their independent living skills. And part of that uh, entails learning language and just kind of everyday life skills and the language that goes along with that. Um, so what we've done with that program is we've broken it down into four different areas of independent living skills. So we've got uh, financial literacy, transportation, medical self-care, grocery shopping, and health units. Um, and every uh, quarter students go through these uh, four units. Um, and learn language, uh, so vocabulary um, associated with each one of those areas and then are able to practice them. Um, but before COVID, we were able to do a little bit more with practicing in very unique ways, you know, kind of hands-on uh, opportunities. So um, Karen might be able to speak more to this, but uh, she did a lot of great work in the classrooms when we were able to be in the classrooms, but taking students, for example, out on uh, the public bus system so that they could learn how that worked. Um, even taking them to a, a field trip to Cub Foods to um, try grocery shopping, you know, with a list of, of things so that they were um, more able to kind of incorporate that skill in, a, in an environment that's safe to learn in. Because Hawthorne is a place that feels safe for our English language learners. And I should say this is at um, kind of a lower level of English learning. We offer uh, English classes for kind of a broad range of skills, starting with people who aren't able and able to read or write in their native language, all the way up to people who are really capable English speakers um, who can read and write quite well, but maybe just need a little bit of help with um, pronunciation, a little bit more in the way of vocabulary. Um, so this kind of falls closer to that earlier range, um, but really trying to get them to use those language skills uh, out in the community and with them, it helps them feel safer. And I don't know if Karen wants to speak to a little bit of uh, Kind of activities that you guys do with that program. Yeah, I can speak to that, Megan. Um, we certainly have been able to do some additional skills hands-on in partnership with some other agencies in the community as well. We were able to partner with public health um, to have a nurse come in and speak about nutrition and um, healthy living and healthy eating. Um, and the field trip that Maggie was referring to kind of incorporated the transportation and working with public health and SNAP educators at Cub Foods to help them um, understand the differences of different uh, 
uh, organic versus regular, generic versus normal uh, brand names and things like that. And so it really broke it down for the students and they were able to also buy some groceries and take them home um, as part of the program that we incorporated. So I just wanted to I have um, Karen say the when they she first took her first um, took their first uh, class on a, the field trip with the bus and one of the students. Um, what did she say? She's because she's always been dependent on her husband or um, somebody else in the family to take her places. And her response to this was, what did she say, Karen? Um, she said, now I can go shopping without my husband, <laughs> which was a great thing to be able to give her an opportunity to have more independence that way. And I think even with the bus situation, there were students that would tell me, um, now they can be more independent. They can, they weren't, they're not as afraid to try to ride the bus as they had been in the past. They were able to overcome that. It wasn't necessarily a money issue per se for the bus fare, as much as it was perhaps stigma and being afraid that they were going to do something wrong. Yeah, I don't think people realize the amount of anxiety that comes with not completely understanding a language and living in a place where that's really the only option is English um, and to not be familiar with that. Um, the students that you work with, are they um, primarily immigrants? Are they um, coming from different parts of the country? Um, can you tell me a little bit about them? So um, probably I would say two thirds, well, maybe not quite two, there's a half, a little over half of our students are immigrants or refugees. Um, our largest um, immigrant and refugee population is Somali. And then our next largest population is really native born um, citizens. Um, so, um, I forgot the question. <laughs> it's all good. Um, just sharing about your students and kind of who makes up that demographic. So yes, so yes, a, a large part of our population is immigrant and refugees. Um, and um, so the other part of the population would be um, the students who come back to um, that don't have their high school diploma, they need their GED or they need skills to transition to college um, or something for employment, work-based things. For this program specifically, we're serving primarily uh, immigrants and refugees. Yeah, we're serving all immigrants and refugees for the grant that we got, but. But overall, yes, we have a, a more diverse student population that maybe someone would expect. Yeah, you do have a broad reach, which um, kind of helps lead me into my next question. Um, our first quarter of the year, United Way focuses on the theme of financial stability and workforce development. And I know that this specific grant you're given is for independent living, but with independent living can come financial stability and workforce development. So I feel like all your programs kind of work together to build um, these skills that can be assets to the community. So how does literacy and life skills for English language learners, how does that program increase opportunities for students to join the workforce and develop skills for also living independently? You've kind of talked about this a little bit, but thinking more about that growth from independent living to workforce, have you seen students that transition into that way or what does that look like? I can address that. Um, so we were able to partner with Catholic Charities in order to do some financial literacy courses. Um, and that had been a great resource for our students because it broke down some very basic things related to credit cards and debt and um, things like rental agreements and what that means and break down some of that language. Um, as a precursor to those people coming in to present, we worked heavily on language and vocabulary so that when the presenter would come in that the students would understand some of that and then the presenter would kind of be a capstone for that and then the teachers can continue to follow up after the presenter was there and those really help them to gain some skills perhaps to join the workforce because they understand um, breaking down things like a paycheck and the language that's on there being able to break down language of an application and um, helping them to gain some of those skills to join the workforce. And I think if you, um, 
as, as an intake person or whatever, many of our students, you say, well, you know, why are you coming to school? And they'll say, I'm coming to school to earn, learn English so that I can get a good job. I mean, that's really their goal. They're not, they're not there to learn English just so they can um, sit at home and watch TV. They're there to learn English, one, to get a good job, second, so that they can help their children in school. Those are the two main reasons that the ESL, the English language learners come to school to learn English. Right, and I think that if you zoom out on our programming as a whole, a lot of it, a lot of students do go through a whole path with us, starting with that ESL learning, which, which now kind of begins with, with these skills, you know, maybe they're learning transportation so they can actually get to work and they don't have to rely on a spouse or another family member to drive them to and from work. Um, the working with those English skills kind of building up through the high school completion, so things like GED, and then moving into, we have a program called uh, Pathways to Careers, um, which offers a couple different career uh, pathways that we, we partner closely with Workforce Development, RTC, RCTC, um, to get students into those uh, high paying careers. So some of them, again, start with us in ESL, work all the way through um, Pathways to Careers, um, or Bridges to Careers. Um, yeah, so that's a, just an overall goal of our programming as, uh, as Nadine referenced earlier. Well, to have students going through all these different layers of your program says a lot about the high quality of your program and also the way that you make them feel that they are comfortable, that they feel valued, that they feel a sense of belonging, which says a lot because that can be really hard to find in adult um, education programs. So that's really, really cool. The next question I have for you is about um, the COVID pandemic. And I know you have done a lot of adapting. So if you'd like to share a little bit about how you have mixed things up. I know field trips are kind of off the table right now. No one's riding the bus, but can you tell us about how you've adapted in the COVID pandemic? Sure. Um, we are part of Rochester Public Schools. We are under that umbrella as a whole. So we have pivoted in some ways the same way as the school district has. We've been able to offer some classes online, or I shouldn't say some, we've offered all of our classes in an online format. Um, in the fall, we were able to do some hybrid learning where there was some in-person and some at home. Again, returning to that online again, starting in November. Uh, we were able to do some back skills to help them to even get online. Think about if you have language learning skills that you need to acquire, but then also trying to get online to get to that online learning. Um, and so it was a lot of support and um, acquisition to give them some devices to use at home as well, overcoming some of those barriers, uh, both with technology and with resources to be able to get online. Yeah, the online piece is becoming more and more relevant and more necessary as a skill in general for all people. Um, so it's interesting to see that evolve. Um, thank you guys for your time today. I have one more question. Um, and it's if you wanted um, the people at home to know one thing about the programs that you're doing and Hawthorne Education Center, what's the one thing you'd like them to really think about when they think about Hawthorne Education Center? Or one thing you'd like them to know? I think I'd like everybody to know that our program is so successful because of the students who come and are so dedicated. I just have to echo Nadine. I think that kind of, you know, people could see how hardworking our students are. Um, they could see kind of the dedication that they put in, the, the reasoning that they that they put in to why they come to school, um, just seeing how they um, sacrifice their time to, to spend at school, to learn English, to gain those skills. Um, I just want to iterate that uh, to the broader community, because um, we, we have some really amazing students at Hawthorne. Yeah. Um, I don't know if people recognize that. That their goal is really the American dream to make a better life for themselves and their family. And they work very, very hard to make it happen. And we are just there to help facilitate that.
Well, your facilitation is well recognized and well appreciated. Um, I heard a, a small rumor that maybe you've received a, a recognition or an award. Is that true? Nadine, is that? It is true. We did. We received a national award for innovative practices. Um, that the innovative practice that we're receiving an award for is for um, our Bridges to Careers programming. But we want to always we want to thank United Way with that because they were when we started our Bridges to Healthcare. That's where it started in healthcare, but now we've expanded it out. Um, United Way um, helped us financially to make that program the success it is today. I mean, we wouldn't have been able to do all that we do with it if it wasn't for their help to get it off the ground. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's exciting. Well, we take great pride in being able to partner with you and um, are incredibly grateful for the work you do for our community because it makes our community so much better. Um, thank you all for joining us today for Partners in Pastries. When it's not a blizzard, I will deliver your pastries. <laughs> and we want to thank United Way for out being our partner too. Um, but you're a very valued partner for us also. Well, thank you. We're incredibly grateful for you. So <laughs> well, thanks for thank having you. us. Have yeah, a great day. Good meeting. Good to see you all. Take care. Bye. Bye.